In the heart of ancient Greece, during a time of internal conflict and turmoil known as the Peloponnesian War, 431-404 BC, a small yet formidable kingdom named Macedonia was quietly rising to prominence. It was from this unassuming land that Alexander the Great would emerge, a young king who would go on to create one of the largest empires in history. Macedonia, though often overlooked by its southern neighbors, shared a deep cultural and linguistic kinship with Greece. Its athletes even competed in the Olympic Games, a testament to their shared heritage. In 359 BC, Philip II ascended to the Macedonian throne, a man of keen intellect and boundless ambition. Philip's time as a hostage in Greece exposed him to the finest Greek education, influencing him with ideas of unity and conquest. He sought to unify the Greek city-states under Macedonian leadership and expand their power eastward, fulfilling the dreams of influential figures like Herodotus and Isocrates. To achieve this grand vision, Philip first focused on strengthening his own kingdom. He revolutionized the Macedonian military, introducing the formidable phalanx formation and organizing his cavalry into disciplined units. This innovative military structure would become the cornerstone of his and his son's future conquests. Philip's military reforms bore fruit, and he soon extended Macedonia's borders into Greece. The Battle of Chaeronea in 338 BC marked a turning point, as Philip decisively defeated Athens and its allies, finally uniting the fractious Greek city-states under his rule. With Greece unified, Philip set his sights on the Persian Empire a vast and wealthy realm that had long been a target of Greek ambition. However, fate intervened before Philip could embark on his grand campaign. In 336 BC, he was assassinated, leaving the throne to his young son, Alexander. Alexander, just 20 years old, had been groomed for leadership from a young age. He received a rigorous education under the guidance of the renowned philosopher Aristotle and honed his military skills under his father's watchful eye. Upon ascending to power, Alexander wasted no time in consolidating his position. He swiftly quelled rebellions in Greece and secured his control over the newly unified kingdom. In 334 BC, with the united Greek army at his back, Alexander crossed the Hellespont into Asia, setting in motion a campaign that would change the course of history. Alexander's military genius quickly became apparent. He secured his flanks by capturing coastal cities, preventing the Persian navy from threatening his supply lines. At the Battle of Issus in 333 BC, he faced a massive Persian army led by King Darius III himself, Yerim Wink or Phil. Despite being outnumbered, Alexander's tactical brilliance and the discipline of his troops led to a decisive victory. This victory opened the way for Alexander to conquer the rest of Asia Minor, including the mighty city of Tyre. After a grueling seven-month siege, Tyre fell, followed by the capture of Gaza. By the end of 332 BC, Alexander had entered Egypt, where he was hailed as a liberator and founded the city of Alexandria, destined to become a renowned center of learning and culture. With Egypt under his control, Alexander turned his attention to the heart of the Persian Empire. He marched through Mesopotamia, crossing the Euphrates and Tigris rivers, and finally confronted Darius once again at the Battle of Gogamala in 331 BC. Once more, Alexander's strategic prowess prevailed, and Darius was forced to flee, leaving his empire in ruins. Alexander entered Babylon in triumph, followed by Susa and Persepolis, the ceremonial capital of Persia. In a moment of drunken revelry, Alexander ordered the burning of Persepolis, symbolizing the end of Persian dominance and the beginning of a new era. Alexander's relentless pursuit of conquest led him to the farthest reaches of the known world. He chased Darius into Central Asia, where the Persian king was ultimately killed by his own men. Alexander's forces marched northward, skirting the Caspian Sea and venturing into the rugged mountains of western Turkestan. From there, they descended into Afghanistan and crossed the treacherous Khyber Pass into India. In India, Alexander faced a new challenge war elephants, a formidable weapon wielded by King Porus at the Battle of the Hydaspes River. Despite the unfamiliar foe, Alexander's ingenuity and tactical acumen once again secured victory. After reaching the Indus River, Alexander's exhausted troops refused to go any further. 
Reluctantly, he turned back, sailing down the Indus and returning to Susa in 324 BC, having spent six years on his epic campaign. Back in Susa, Alexander set about consolidating his vast empire. He sought to create a harmonious blend of Greek and Eastern cultures, even arranging marriages between his officers and Persian women. However, his reign was cut short when he fell ill in Babylon and died in 323 BC at the young age of 32. Alexander's untimely death left a power vacuum, and his empire soon fragmented. His generals, known as the Diadochi, divided the territories amongst themselves, leading to decades of conflict and instability. Despite the political turmoil that followed, Alexander's legacy endured. His conquest spread Greek culture and language across vast swaths of Asia and Africa, ushering in the Hellenistic period, a vibrant era characterized by the fusion of Greek and Eastern traditions. The seeds sown by Alexander's conquests would eventually give rise to the Roman Empire, which would go on to unify much of the known world under its rule. The story of Alexander the Great is a testament to the power of ambition, leadership, and the enduring impact of cultural exchange. It is a tale of triumph and tragedy, of a young king who dared to dream big and who, in his brief but extraordinary life, reshaped the world in ways that continue to resonate today. Thank you for joining us in celebrating Alexander the Great, where rulership began as a sacred duty entrusted to leaders by their communities. Together, let us honor the resilience and fortitude of ancient dynasties and royal families whose legacies continue to inspire us to strive for self-control and wisdom in our modern pursuits. Remember, you are an essential part of our community. If you found this video insightful or thought-provoking, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel for more royal heritage and educational purposes.